Hello, welcome back. In this video, we're going to take a look at how to create collisions between two objects on the screen. Now, so far, we just have one object, and that object is our ship. Now, if you remember, our ship is inside of a rectangle and has little thrusters at the back. And the tip of our ship doesn't actually go to the end of the rectangle up at the top or the square. And it also not super important at this point, but it's 64 pixels wide by 64 pixels tall. In a moment, we're going to create an asteroid or import an asteroid. And it's going to be a little asteroid object, you know. So we get an asteroid, and our ship is going to be moving around the screen, you know, trying to blow up the asteroids eventually or not get hit by them at the very least. Now, what we want is for when the box that surrounds the ship if it intersects the box that surrounds the asteroid, we want an event to happen, like game over, the ship blows up, or if a bullet comes up and hits the asteroid box, the asteroid blows up. So what we're going to do is we're going to create something called a hitbox around the ship and a hitbox around the asteroid. And when those two hitboxes are overlapping, we're going to have it return a true statement saying, okay, yeah, they're overlapping, and false if they're not going to be an overlapping. And then we'll go ahead and create some animations for the ship blowing up if it happens to hit the asteroid object. And we'll be doing that in future videos. So there is a bit of an issue, though. I want to go ahead and tell you that right now. As we get our ship object and it starts moving up, it's going to detect a collision. Let me go ahead and, ooh, go ahead and draw the, the corner of the ship here. So if the ship happens to reach just the corner of the ship box, reaches the corner of the asteroid box, you might notice that it's going to give us a uh, game over message eventually, you know. Right now it's just going to return true. Even though the asteroid appears to just be off to the side over here and the ship appears on the screen to be right here, it's still going to say that you hit the asteroid. There's a way to fix that, and we might fix that in a future video. For right now, we're just going to show you the concept of what a hitbox is and how to construct one. There's also something called a polygon object we can create. Uh, it's a little bit more complicated. Again, we might fix this later just to make it a little bit, a little bit smoother, a little bit more realistic, because you really don't want to get a game over message when your asteroid's like over here and your ship's right there. But okay, that's. If for the drawing, let's go ahead and get to our program and start working on creating those hitboxes. So the first thing we're going to want to do inside of our program is to create a new image in order to import it into our game. And I went ahead and created an asteroid image. Let's go to there. And I will load this into the um, assets folder for you all to check out here in a second. So, by the way, when you want to include an image again into your project, I'm going to hold down the shift or the control button while moving it. <laughs> and drop it into assets. It's going to give me a pop-up message saying copy file asteroid.png and do I want to copy it? Yes I do, so it copies it and we're going to add the file to git. You can ignore this for right now, we're going to talk about git later. So it's added the asteroid file to our assets and now we can create a new texture called asteroid. So let's go texture asteroid and when we create the images, we're also going to want to create our asteroid image. Asteroids equal to new texture and it's equal to asteroid.png. So there you go, we've got our asteroid. And now just to make sure that it's actually showing up on the screen, why don't we go ahead and render it under batch.draw. Let's do batch draw and let's draw the asteroid and let's draw it at 200 pixels by 300 pixels so that means the lower left hand corner of the asteroid should be at 200 300 and to let you know the asteroid is a 32 by 32 pixel box so when we run the game hopefully 
the asteroid should now be showing up on the screen. Now, the game doesn't really know what we're doing with these objects. So we have our ship, and our ship's just passing underneath the asteroid, and nothing is happening whatsoever. Because again, the game isn't aware of our intentions for this thing that we've called the asteroid. So what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to create a box around our ship and a box around the asteroid. So that's going to be our first step. And to do that, we're going to use the rectangle object, just because that's the easiest one to use to kind of get used to creating these hit boxes. Uh, again, we might move on to polygons later. So for right now, just go ahead and type in the word rectangle. And the rectangle you want to select is under the com.badlogic.gdx.math. So this particular rectangle object here. Now when I created the rectangle, notice it automatically added the import statement to the top. If that did not happen, you might have to right click it and add the library or add the class file to your import statements. So we're going to do rectangle. And my rectangle is an instance of a class, so we're just going to call it ship hit box. So that's the box that's going to be surrounding our ship. And we also need a rectangle to be surrounding our asteroid. So we're going to call that rectangle asteroid hit box. So we've reserved both of these names. Now let's come down and let's actually create the rectangle that goes around the ship and create the rectangle that goes around the asteroid. So we've got image here. Let's go ahead and create the ship hit box. Or ship hit box is going to be equal to new rectangle. And the rectangle object, there's a couple different ways to create a rectangle. The way we're going to use is to define the lower left hand corner, sort of like you did with your texture. So our lower left hand corner is going to be x comma y. Before we go any further right here, notice this is the XY here. And if you'll remember also when we draw our ship, image IMG is our ship, it's also got XY as its lower left hand coordinate. So let's come back up to our rectangle. And so the lower left hand corner, you have to define those two coordinates or those two coordinates, that is first. And then you put in the dimensions. So we're going to want it to be 64 pixels wide by 64 pixels tall. And that should box around our ship perfectly. Now for our asteroid, it was a 32 pixel by 32 pixel. So what we're going to do is we're going to go asteroid hitbox equals new rectangle. And it's going to be at the position, where do we put that rectangle? We put it at 200, 300. So the lower left hand corner is going to be 200, 300. It's just going to sit there. The asteroid's not going to go anywhere. So it's going to be a fixed value. We're not going to be using X and Y. So 200, 300, and it's going to be 32 pixels wide by 32 pixels tall. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that extra space just to make it a little bit neater looking. And there we go. So we've got a hitbox. And if we play the game, you might expect, oh, I'm going to see a box around each of those objects. No, there, there's no box being shown because we haven't actually drawn the box and we're not going to draw the box. You don't you don't want to see the hitbox around your images as you're playing the game. You just want those hitboxes to detect collisions. So for right now there's nothing going on, nothing's really changed looking. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come down here and inside of our loop we're going to update the ship hitbox position. So the ship hitbox starts off at x, y. Now remember we created the instance of the class right here at x, y. So it creates it immediately at 0, 0. We define x, y, the variables default to 0. And then it's going to go ahead and put the ship hitbox at 0, 0 right here. So we, now we need to update the position of the ship hitbox by doing the following. We're going to go ship hitbox dot set position x, y. Now the reason we're doing it right here is because you want the game loop to say, hey, clear the background or set the background color, clear the background. 
if these keys are pressed, add values to X or Y, and then update the position of this ship hitbox. Now, the asteroid hitbox is stationary. It's going to stay exactly where it's at. So we don't need to update the position of the asteroid hitbox. But what we want to do now is we want to somehow tell ourselves or tell the computer program, hey, there's been a collision. They, they, they're overlapping. And there's a built-in method that allows us to do that for rectangles. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go system.out.println. Remember that just prints whatever's going to be inside the parentheses. And what I want to do is I want to print what happens when we have shit hitbox. And here's the command, dot overlaps. So what happens, or rather what this method is, is it says we take one rectangle, the ship hitbox, and we're going to check to see if it overlaps. And the argument we're going to use is another rectangle. Well, our other rectangle we're going to check is our asteroid hitbox. So what this says is, hey, is the ship hitbox overlapping the asteroid hitbox? If so, all of this entire statement is going to return a true value, and it should print true to the screen. If it's not true, it'll return a false statement, and it's going to print that out. So it's going to run the program, and let's see what happens. I'm going to want to start printing false. Notice it's printing false every time it loops through the program. And notice now it says true. And that was a bit of an issue, because remember, each of these are boxes. And if the boxes are overlapping at all, it's going to be considered an intersection. So let's see if I can get the thrusters. That would be another issue. You probably don't want to blow up your ship when you get there if the thrusters are happen to be touching the asteroid. Um, if anything, you'd probably want to affect the asteroid, not the ship. So here you go. You should have a ship. Go ahead and play around with this. And you might even try moving the asteroid around and playing around with the sizes of the hitboxes yourself just to see if you can get used to the idea of setting up the hitboxes and running the program. So there you go. That's it for today's video, creating hitboxes and just returning a value if they happen to be intersecting. In the next video, we're going to create a custom animation where, not really an animation, we're just going to replace one image with the next. Whereas if the ship hits the asteroid, it's going to create a blown up image of a ship. So I look forward to seeing you in next video, and that's it for now.